If you are a JavaScript or TypeScript developer, it's very important to know the difference between return versus return await in async functions. This is a popular quiz that I'm running here on Twitter, and in this video, I'm going to give you the answer. I'm going to explain briefly what is the async await syntax and how to use it, and then I'm going to answer the question, what is the difference between return versus return await? It's important to know the difference in certain scenarios. Welcome back to the Angular University channel. I'm Vasco. So a quick reminder about what is the async await syntax. It's a language level syntax that allows you to easily write promise based code. So for example, here, this function here, get courses returns a promise. You can handle the promise with dot then dot catch, etc. But instead of using the dot then option of handling promises, you can instead use the async await syntax. So what you do is you get a method that returns a promise and you turn it into a sync. And I'm going to do the same here. And now inside the method, you can use the await syntax. So the method implicitly, because it's using the async keyword, it's going to be returning a promise. So even if you return here a primitive type such as zero or a string, this value that you return here is going to get automatically wrapped in a promise that gets evaluated to the value zero just by the presence of the async keyword. So any primitive values returned will be wrapped in promises. And if you return a promise, that will be the actual return type of the method. Now let's have a look at the use of await. Instead of using here dot then, we are going to go ahead and we're going to say here that the response to our request is going to be the output of get courses. And because this output is a promise, we can await for its resolution. And then after that, we can continue our program in a synchronous looking way. So this that you see here, the code below the await is actually the dot then clause of this promise. So the code looks really synchronous. It doesn't look like a synchronous code anymore. It's using promises under the hood, but after a while, you don't even think about the promises anymore. You are just using the async await syntax. All right, so that was a flash recap on how async await works. Now let's see this in action. I'm going to switch here to a larger browser window. I'm going to trigger here the request, and we can see that the request went through. So we can see that this was printed out to the screen. The request was successfully executed. We got what we expected whenever we triggered this click handler here. Now, what happens if I do here a return await? What is the difference? What does this mean? If now I try this out here in the browser, we're going to get the exact same result. And that could lead you to believe that there is actually no difference between using return and return await. And that conclusion would actually be correct in this particular case, but not in general. So what is return await? What does this mean? Let's think about it. This is exactly the same as taking the result of await assigning it to a variable and returning the result. So return await is functionally equivalent to this. It's exactly the same thing. So again, you might think that there is absolutely no difference between the two cases, but that is not the case all the time. There is an important case where the difference matters and it has to do with error handling. Notice that these functions here, they don't have any error handling. So let's add some error handling. And in the case of the async await syntax, that is done with a try catch block. So again, this looks like it's perfectly synchronous logic. So the catch block is essentially the same as a promise catch. Uh, let me show you here an example. So I'm going to call here get courses and I'm going to use here the dot then syntax to handle the result here. 
right, like we did before. But if something goes wrong, we can also catch here the error and handle it here using a promise catch block. Well, when we are using a try catch block inside an async function, we are essentially uh, defining here the contents of a promise catch block. So whatever you would write here inside the promise catch block is going to show up here in your synchronous catch block. All right, so then let's go ahead and let's remove this and let's go back to our example. So here we are adding error handling here in the calling function. Now let's also add error handling here at the level of the called function. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply here a try block again. So let's wrap this in a try block and let's catch here our error and let's do some local error handling. Now we are getting here an error uh, saying that not all paths here in this function return a value. So let's say that if we didn't manage to return anything, we are going to return null. All right, so here is what we're going to do. We are going to now try to execute our program and try to anticipate what will happen. Do you think that this local try catch block is going to execute it? Or do you think that the top level catch block is going to get triggered instead? Let's have a look. I'm going to switch here to a larger window and now I'm going to clear the console. And as you can see, in the case when there is no error, everything works as always exactly in the same way. But what if now I shut down the server again and I go back and I trigger this request? Let's see what happens. I'm going to trigger the request and we can see that only the error handling block of the calling function was executed. So what happened here? What happened is that in the called function get courses, we have returned this promise immediately. We did not await for its execution. So that promise was passed as is to the calling function. And it's this calling function that waited for the outcome of the promise. The promise froze an error and then this catch block here gets executed. Now, this typically is not what you want. What you usually want to do is to handle the error locally as close to the source as possible. So let's see what happens if we now call here a return await. Now I'm going to switch back here to the browser. Let me trigger again another request. And this time around, the local catch block was indeed executed. So as you can see, return versus return await is going to give you different outcomes in the case that you are doing error handling in that particular async function. If you just return a promise, then if that promise fails, your local catch block is not going to be executed. On the other hand, if you do a return await, then the outcome of this promise is going to be awaited here and the resolution of the promise is either going to be that we got a value that we then return or if the promise fails, we are going to trigger the local catch block. So you can see return versus return await only makes a difference and it makes a big difference in the case of error handling using the try catch block. Remember, if you are having a hard time wrapping your head around this, always remember that return await is essentially equivalent to assigning the output of await to a result and then returning it. I think that written this way, it's much more logical to understand that indeed, if we do it like this, this catch block might be triggered, but if we just return here the promise immediately, then of course, this catch block will not get executed. Now you are probably thinking, which one is the correct option? Both are correct. Both are supported in the JavaScript language. It depends on what you want to do. So if you want to return a promise and let the calling function handle 
the outcome of a possible error, then just do a return. If you want to handle the error locally, do a return await. So I hope that this helped. If you are interested in learning how to build Angular applications using a sync await and signals with minimal RxJS, go ahead and check out my Modern Angular with Signals course available at my website, The Angular University. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I will see you next time. Cheers everyone!